Now, this video is looking at the concept of the uh, trade union and the impact the trade unions have on different markets. And we're going to look at this diagram of a trade union markup. Now, you remember from class we were looking at, well, obviously defining what um, a trade union is. We said that they were um, a body uh, that looked after or fought for the, um, the welfare and interests of their employee, they negotiate through a process called collective bargaining between um, the individual firm and the trade union and they negotiate together to get the best for um, individual employees. It's not compulsory that if you are an employee you join a trade union um, but obviously it has various um, benefits to the individual employee, notably protecting their um, uh, welfare but also increasing um, their wage rates and that's probably what we're most important with, most interested in, sorry, in um, economics looking at this concept of our trade unions and the impact that they have on wage rates, the impact the trade union has on a labour market. Now, for this uh, video, we're going to look at the impact of a trade union markup on an imperfectly competitive labour market. And we'll be analysing the implications, looking at the diagram, how would we use the diagram in our answers, uh, and notably um, any evaluation points we can make reference to. Okay, So on our y-axis, we have our wage rates. And on our x-axis then, we have the quantity of labour on our zero in the corner. Now, simply to start off, not a difficult one, we're looking at the supply and demand. Okay, demand for labour and our supply of labour in a market. Once we do that, it's just a basic um, supply and demand diagram, very similar to our work at AS. Do your dashed line, just Q1, and then find your equilibrium wage rate, which is W1. Okay. Now, that's the uh, wage rate determined by the free market forces in an imperfectly competitive labour market, upward sloping supply, downward sloping demand curve, simply meet in the middle in the equilibrium, equilibrium wage, equilibrium quantity. In a market without any intervention from the trade union, we haven't even mentioned the trade union yet, we do, the trade union hasn't done anything to increase this wage. This is the equilibrium wage rate determined by the market forces. Okay. Now, individual employees may not be happy with this wage rate. They may want this wage rate to increase. So, let's imagine that the uh, trade union, they were successful in their process of collective bargaining. They go about this process of collective bargaining and they increase the wage. So, show our increase in wage. Now, normally we would do a dashed line, but this is actually a curve and I'm going to explain that now. So, it, do your straight line across because this is actually a new curve. This comes W2. W2, TU, to indicate that it's a wage determined by the trade union. Now, going back to AS economics, forgetting about that this is a labour market, well, imagine just an individual product market. Do your dashed lines now to show sort of the impact this is having on both supply and demand. So this becomes Q3 and this becomes Q2. Okay. Now, let's study this diagram for a second. The trade union has increased the wage, which is a good thing. It's good for employees that could increase their um, disposable income. They could consume more, for example. They could have a better quality of life. They might feel more valued. They might feel more productive, uh, etc. Employees will obviously wage rate is um, the increase in the wage rate is obviously a positive factor. Now, for employees working in this industry, if the firm increases the wage rate, well, then that causes then a movement along the supply curve. And we reach this point here, okay, point A. Now with point A, people might think, well, look, they've increased the wage rate. I would want now to work for that industry or to work for that firm. And so more people are willing and able to supply their labour. Now, let's imagine you weren't increasing the number of people working for the organisation. And let's imagine at point A, um, in actual fact, you were increasing the working hours. What these employees will think was that uh, will be that, the firm has now increased wage, let's now work more hours. It might be more beneficial for us to work more hours. So the attractiveness to the job, the incentive to supply labour has increased because the wage rate has increased to W2. Okay. Now, that's great for the individual employee. 
It's great for potential employees because they think, well, great, increasing the wage, um, we're going to have a better standard of living, better quality of life. However, we need to look at it now from the firm's perspective. From the firm's perspective, the increase from W1 to W2 has now increased their cost of production. That increase in cost of production goes against the cost minimization objective of organizations, cost minimizers and profit maximizers. As a result of this movement along then the demand curve, the increase in the, the wage rate increases cost of production, so firms now demand less labor. So their demand decreases from Q1 to Q2. The increase in the wage rate for the employees increases supply from Q1 to Q3. So we've got a bit of conflict between here. One's going in one direction, the other's going in another. Bad for the firm, good for customers. Sorry, good for employees. What we've left ourselves now with is actually a new supply curve, which is from here, following this across, to point A, and right up to SL, so supply of labour. So this now becomes a kinked supply curve of labour. Why is it kinked? Why is this now a curve? It is a curve because no individual in that organisation will work now below W2. Nobody would work for W1, nobody would work for anywhere in between here, no individual will work below that. So this is now why it creates this new actual curve, a kinked supply curve. Now, increase in the wage rate, great for supply, encourages more people to supply, but we've now ended up with this area here being an excess supply of labour. People want to supply at Q3, but the firm only wants to demand at Q2. More people are willing and able to work than what the firm can afford to pay. So this ultimately then causes unemployment. So why does it create unemployment? Firms will now only demand at Q2. In the short run, what's likely to happen is that staff will get a pay increase. In the long run then, the firm will review its pay structures, they'll review their operations, they'll look to cut inefficiencies in the workforce. Increase in the wage rate will increase cost of production, as a result, the firm will demand less labour. As they demand less labour, maybe people are made redundant. This area around here, um, this excess supply of labour, this is now an issue for the firm, they need to now look at readdressing this and doing something about that. To do that, they need to lay off staff, they need to cut off staff, they create levels of uh, unemployment. So overall evaluation of trade unions in a perfectly competitive labour market. It increases the wages, which is great for employees, and it can be good for the, uh, the economy as well. Remember, we're achieving um, increases in consumption, increases in the quality of living, for example. That might help to achieve economic growth. However, on the other hand, the increase in the wage increases cost of production. As a result then the firm demands less labour or they will expect their staff to justify that pay increase and make them work more, Okay, make sure that their wage matches their perceived marginal revenue product. As a result of that then they'll be expected then to uh, uh, create unemployment in the industry, Okay, which is obviously a negative then for workers. Some workers will be made unemployed, some um, will not have to go down that line. Okay, some will be home and dry, they'll be safe and won't have to go down that route. Again, creating unemployment conflicts with um, government macroeconomic objectives. Okay, so I hope that diagram has now been made slight, uh, slightly more um, simplistic for you. Uh, the key to this, and this increase in the wage rate, is our trade union markup. In terms of the exam, you know, simply saying the increased wage, very true, but adding in that extra bit of sort of sophisticated discussion um, if you're able to talk about unemployment, excess supply of labour, um, trade union market for example, it makes your answers just sound slightly more sophisticated.